This is Doug DeMuro, and today I'm going to tell you about five BMWs that you didn't know about. I love quirky and weird cars, so let's get into some weird BMWs that most people have no idea existed. Let's do it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some great sales recently, including this wonderful Sprinter van, four-wheel drive camper conversion, brought almost $70,000. This amazing E46 BMW M3 sold for just under $30,000 and this wonderful Mercedes CL63 AMG brought $46,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. With daily auctions and great selection, check it out at carsandbids.com. Okay, so BMWs you didn't know about. Now, obviously, if you're a super BMW enthusiast, you will probably know about these cars, and I'll get some of those comments, I knew about all these! Fine, I get it. But most people don't know about these uh, five BMWs, and I think it's weird that there are automakers as big as BMW that produce cars that totally fly under the radar to the point where most enthusiasts never knew they existed in the first place. So, some interesting cars in this list. Let's start with the E46 BMW 3 Series Compact. This thing is a BMW 3 Series hatchback from the early 2000s. Now, most BMW enthusiasts know that the prior generation model was sold as a hatchback in North America. It was called the 318Ti, here it is, and it was a rear-wheel drive hatchback companion to the sedan, coupe, and convertible E36 3 Series. Now, this car did not sell particularly well here in North America. Hatchbacks in general aren't really that strong sellers. They weren't then, they still aren't, and buyers didn't really want it. But in Europe, it sold well enough that BMW decided to do a second generation. So the E46 BMW 3 Series, which was sold in North America as a sedan, a coupe, a convertible, and a wagon, in Europe was also sold as a hatchback, the E46 Compact, a two-door BMW hatchback in the early 2000s. Couple interesting things about this car. For one thing, it wasn't just a tiny four-cylinder like the 318Ti had been here in North America. BMW offered that, but they also offered a 2.5-liter six-cylinder with 190 horsepower and an available manual transmission. And in a car the size of the E46 Compact, that was probably a relatively decent performing vehicle. Now, the other interesting thing in my mind about the E46 Compact, the front end is actually different from a regular E46. The headlights are completely different. You can see they're actually separated into two like circles of headlight like old school BMW models are, and it's interesting to see that uh, difference from the standard E46 that only the compact models had. So there's one BMW you probably didn't know about. Okay, next up, BMWs you don't know about, the BMW Hydrogen 7. Now, car enthusiasts hear the word hydrogen and they start to yawn and get bored and move on to the next Hoovy video. But the Hydrogen 7 was a hydrogen-powered BMW 7 Series with a V12. Okay, when you think of hydrogen cars, you probably think of little ugly hatchbacks like the old Toyota Mirai that are just like laughable. Well, BMW made a Hydrogen 7 Series with a V12 and actually put them into production. Now, it was a small production run. Only 100 of these were made. They were only offered in Europe, but they were available. You could get a Hydrogen power. <laughs> 7 Series with a V12. The way they did it was they took the regular V12 that was already in the 760i and the 760li and they added a component that allowed the engine to run off of hydrogen power. So you could actually run it on either regular fuel, gasoline, or hydrogen, whatever you chose. Now, the drawback of this vehicle, in addition to being only 100 made and the fact that it weighed 550 pounds more than a standard 760, it only had 260 horsepower. They really kind of killed the whole thing. And so zero to 60 time was around nine seconds. And obviously it was far more expensive than a standard seven series. So it was very expensive. Performance sucked, it was heavier. And there weren't many, this came out in like the mid 2000s, there weren't many hydrogen refueling stations. So it was a totally non-starter thing. But the next time somebody says hydrogen cars and you think of 
boring, ugly hatchbacks, there was a V12 Hydrogen 7 Series. And by the way, BMW even did a prototype Hydrogen 7 Series on the E38 body style. This car is the 750HL, and it was a hydrogen-powered E38 V12 7 Series. Those weren't sold to the public, but it does exist, one of them. That for sure is a BMW that I bet you didn't know about. But next BMW that you probably don't know about, this is the most known car on this list, the X5 LM. At one point, BMW took the X5 crossover and they, <laughs> they made a Le Mans version of it. They took the V12 out of their Le Mans race car and they stuck it in the X5 <laughs> And then it was a one of one and they never sold it. So this is like kind of a concept car, but they created this vehicle and they made an X5 LM. This V12 was a very similar engine to the one that was used in the McLaren F1. So uh, just a variant of it, essentially. Uh, effectively, there was a BMW X5 made with the McLaren F1 powertrain. But actually, that's not the craziest thing. The craziest thing is that there was a variant of the BMW X5 made with a Le Mans race car powertrain. Like, what? The X5 is like, you know, you see three of them on the street driven by moms. Well, they made one with a V12 from a straight up Le Mans race car. It had 700 horsepower, is absolutely absurd. And as you can see from these shots, the exterior was not really changed that much. And kudos to BMW for that. So many automakers, especially in this era, when they make concept cars, they throw stupid stickers or paint or decals or weird exterior schemes on them. But BMW kept this like pretty subtle. There was a body kit. There were these wheels to help clear larger brakes. That was pretty much it. So you had this kind of subtle wolf in sheep's clothing X5. And a, with a Le Mans V8. And the interior was a little bit different. The driver's seat was replaced with a carbon fiber race seat with a racing harness. The rear seats were gone entirely and there was a roll cage installed. And I know a lot of this, um, there's not a lot of pictures or info about this car online, but I actually saw this car in person at Monterey Car Week maybe six or seven years ago. BMW was the featured one of the featured brands and so they were kind of bringing all their cool stuff out and this was one of the cars that showed up and I got to see it and look at it and even touch the famous X5 LM. Okay, next up, here is one that virtually nobody knows about, even real BMW enthusiasts, the M3 CRT. So what this was, was an E90 BMW M3 sedan. Of course, that was the V8 one they made in the late 2000s and early 2010s. It was an E90 M3 sedan, but this was a special edition. CRT stood for Carbon Racing Technology. And what this car offered was carbon fiber stuff. So it had a carbon fiber hood, carbon fiber seats, and there was other weight reduction throughout the car. I've actually seen one of these in person and I feel like it didn't have a trunk liner. And there were other weight reduction things that had been done. The result was it weighed about 150 pounds less than a standard E90 BMW M3. Now, this car came out 13 years ago. And in the years since then, obviously carbon fiber technology has become so much more common that we look at this car and we're like, what? <laughs> like, why is that even special? Why was that even a special addition to have carbon seats and a carbon hood? That's not anything. But back then it was kind of a big deal to put it into a car like that. BMW made only 67 of these. So regardless of your thoughts on whether it was really that special or not, it was an incredibly small production run, 67 units. And when they do come up for sale, I think they sell between like $100,000 and $200,000, believe it or not, just because they're so, so incredibly rare. And they also had a little bit of a power boost over the standard M3. I think the regular M3 was like 415, 420 horse. This was like 445, something like that. It wasn't a huge amount, but it added a little bit more cred to the car. Um, again, this car is not incredibly cool. There weren't that many changes, and especially by modern standards, it's not really even all that special. But at the time, it was, it was special, it was super low volume, and it's largely unknown. And so this is kind of a very obscure BMW, but it exists, and now you know about it, the M3 CRT. Okay, last of the five BMW models that you don't know about, how about the E34 M5? Cabriolet. Yes, that's right. Late 80s, early 90s, the BMW M5 was the E34 model. And they offered this car as a sedan, just like the previous M5 had been. But the previous M5 had been pretty popular. And so BMW decided, hey, why not expand this to a wagon? And so the E34 M5 was also offered as a wagon and a sedan. So BMW said, hey, you know, people are really buying into this M thing. Like it was the beginnings of M. They were like, why don't we make a convertible 
as well. Even though the 5 Series had only ever been a four-door car, like, why don't we make a convertible 5 Series? They had canceled the 6 Series by that time, and so their lineup had a little bit of a hole here. And they were thinking maybe like a mid-sized convertible, and presumably a coupe, eventually, could be made, and they would make an M5. So they did one. They made a concept car version of this. It looks completely like it came down a production line. Like, it's not some janky thing. It looks like a factory built. Like, you look at it and think this was just a regular serial production car, but obviously it never was, and it kind of messes with your mind. Like, wait, that's a E34, but it's a two-door convertible. I don't really understand. But they did make that. And my understanding is the car was headed for not only auto show debut, but even potentially and likely production when finally BMW was like, you know, we think that this car and with its pricing and with its positioning is gonna steal too many sales away from the E30 and then the E36. With the E36, they were already developing an M3 convertible model and the E30 had had an M3 convertible model. And just generally speaking, three series sales were strong and focused a lot on the two door cars at that time. And so BMW said, I think, you know, the cost to convert it, to, to create a two door five series, and then to potentially steal sales away from the three series, it isn't necessarily worth it. And so they didn't do it. And they never showed it at an auto show. And in fact, they kind of kept it under wraps until only a few years ago when it got covered in a few publications. And it was like, what? This existed? So it's not a production car. It was never available like the rest of the cars on this list, except for the X5 LM. But, uh, but it does exist. It's out there. They tried it and they almost put it into production. And on that subject, by the way, Another car that BMW made one of and didn't put into production, the E46 M3 Wagon. They had developed a concept version of a Wagon E46 M3, but they decided not to do it. It's such a shame. The original M3 had been a Cooper convertible. The next M3 was a Coupe sedan or convertible, but then the E46 came out, they went back to Coupe convertible. And apparently they were thinking, hey, maybe we'll do a Wagon, bring the practicality back. But unfortunately, it just didn't happen. Uh, and I say unfortunate because the one they did make looks so cool. And people have made replica versions of that and really done up everything to make it like correct. But it's such a shame BMW didn't make it themselves because I think that would have been a really neat car, especially now as like a used performance wagon with a manual transmission. Cars have gone so far from that. But BMW has apparently made a few really special one-off cars. Uh, and those are two of them. The X5 LM is another, and this has been an installment of BMW's You Didn't Know About.